And welcome back, everybody, to another session of Gaming with God. I'm your host, Grumpy Old Dude. And as you can see on the screen today, I've got something a little different. I'm at Nexus Mods. And the reason for that is I want to talk to you about a specific mod for a specific game. Now, I'm logged in. I can get there by going to my Games tab here and just hitting Celasta. If you don't already have Celasta and, and you're not logged in, the easiest way to do it is to do Celast, just do a search for Celasta. All kinds of stuff will come up. Now what you want, here's Celasta Crown of the Magister. Now you're at the home screen, okay? Now we want to find the community expansion mod specifically. And as you can see, it's not listed on this page. So we're going to go to this tab button here and hit that, this link. And now we're at the home page for all the Slash stuff. And look at there, right there on the front, Slash the Community Expansion 2. You're going to click on that. You look at requirements, it's going to tell you you need the Unity Mod Manager. So go download that. Come back. And under Files, Slash the Community Expansion down, Manual Download. Now, if you have a Mac, you'll want to download this one, okay? If you're using Sinai Dev's Unity Explorer and you want to enable that, you'll download this one and drop these inside the Community Expansion folder. So you can still download this one for Windows, this one for Mac, this one if you've got Windows and you're using whatever this is. I don't even know. Sinai Dev's Unity Explorer, okay? So we're going to download the, the uh, we've already, already got that. So class, the last community expansion mod, download. It'll start in just a few seconds. It's free. There it is. And it's all downloaded. Okay. Now, once you've got it downloaded, you've got to install the Unity Mod Manager. Let me change my display window here. There we go. Slide that over. Now we're looking at my D drive. Okay. Uh, and I'm specifically, I'm in my downloads file. So you're going to double click on your Unity Mod Manager here to install that. Here we go. Once you uh, double click it from your downloads folder, this is what you get. Then you extract it and designate where you want it to go. Another window will open, like that. And right now it's going to want to download into my user's uh, file under my C drive. I don't want it there. So I click the Browse tab. Another window opens. You know what that is, Browse for Folder. I click on my D drive, hit OK, and then up here, Type in Unity Mod Manager and hit OK. It will then install the Unity Mod Manager in that directory. OK. Now let me go back to OBS here and delete a couple of windows that I don't need anymore. Now we're back to my D drive. OK. Unity Mod Manager. You'll open that up. And then you will come down here and you will start the Unity Mod Manager, which I had already done. Now mine is already pointing at my Celasta um, install. You'll have to point direct yours to your Celasta directory. Now depending on which uh, version you've got, I've got GOG and I've got it on Steam. GOG has all the downloadable content. Okay. So I have mine pointed at my GOG directory. Click on that, and then just come down and find your directory. That's what you get when you click on, the, on your um, the directory window there from the Unity Manager, which is right here. You click on that, and this is what opens up. Now, if you have Steam, for example, then you will have to go to your Steam installation directory. It'll be under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, 
and Celastic Crown of the Magister. If, like me, you have Gog, then you'll go to your Gog Galaxy, Games, Celastic Crown of the Magister, and you'll hit OK. All right? That will install, that will point your Unity Mod Manager at the correct directory for when you have it install the um, uh, Community Expansion Mod. Once you do that, you close Unity Mod Manager. I don't know why. That's what you do. Then you start your Unity Mod Manager back up again. Now I'm, we're going to go back to our Downloads file. Come over here to the Mods tab. And you're going to drag this last community expansion mod down to here. And it's unpacking that mod. Then you're going to tell it to install the mod. I already have installed it, so I'm not going to tell it to install it. But that's what you would do now is click Install Mod. And it will then install the mod for you. And you'll be ready to go. Once you've done that, you can boot up your game. And now that is what you have when you land um, on the landing screen, when you open the game. Now, green dot means it's active, it's, uh, everything's good. Now you'll click on the community expansion and open it up, and this is where you set what you want it to do, okay? You've got character, then you've got sub-tabs, general, races, classes, and subclasses, feats, and fighting, spells, gameplay, rules, Item crafts and merchants, tools, interface, settings for the dungeon maker, for the game UI, game board, keyboard, and mouse. What was the first thing I said there? Game board. There are a lot of folks on the Steam forums calling for pads, uh, controller support, gamepad. Right here, enable gamepad support. There is language translations. Encounters, general, bestiary, and characters, and the credits and diagnostics, credits, blueprints, and services. Okay. We're going to go back to the character general tab. I have enabled these green selections. They do not start to uh, enable. I enabled the alternate humans, which adds, gives them a feat at first level. I enable epic point buy instead of, I think it's 27 points is the default that you start out, maybe 28, something like that, for the point buy. This allows 35 points. Total feats granted. Everybody gets a feat. As far as I'm concerned, everybody should start with one feat. The alternate humans gets plus one, so they would start with two feats. Okay. Enforced ability, multi-class. Enforced ability score minimum in and out prerequisites. What does that mean? That means if you have a rogue with a nine intelligence, you're not going to turn them into a rogue wizard. Okay, the nine intelligence won't let them. You can select cantrips or spells already learned from other classes and display all known spells from other classes during level up. I don't want to duplicate spells. If I already know a given spell as a wizard, I don't need to take that same spell as a warlock. Right? Whatever. Okay, there's just no need for that. Max allowed class is three. I did three because I, I started playing D&D &D back in 1978, 44 years ago. Yes, I'm an old dude, and stay humble. Um, under AD&D, &D, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which was pre-second edition. Under AD&D, &D, if I remember correctly, the fighter magic user Thief was... The only three class, uh, multi class there was. There might have been, uh, a dwarf might have been able to be a fighter cleric thief, I don't recall. Uh, fighter cleric dwarves were fun to play. Tabletop. <laughs> because they could go up there to ninth and tenth level in fighter and cleric. See, in, in the old days, multi class was only uh, the subhuman races, uh, non human races, and only humans were unlimited in level. I believe elves were unlimited in thief level. I think halflings were unlimited in thief level. But other than that, they were limited in the level they could go to. And uh, 
The advantage being multi-class was you could do multiple skill sets. The disadvantage was you were level capped. Uh, and it wasn't real high level. 910 for the fighter cleric dwarf was about as high as they got. I think an elven wizard with an 18 intelligence can maybe go to level 12. So, yeah. I laugh when people complain about the level cap being 10 when Celeste first came out at 12 uh, revised. Because level 12 was mojo high level in tabletop. Enable level 20. Here you go, folks, I was just referring to. <coughs> you can enable level 20. Enable feat selection at class levels 2, 6, 10, and 14. Visuals. Unlock or offer additional lore-friendly names. Unlock all NPC faces. This is, uh, affects your character creation. Allow sorcerer without markings and tats. Unlock sorcerer marking and tats for all characters. Now you do a sorcerer without tats if you want. Or if you want to, you can do a dwarven cleric and give him tats. Unlock glowing colors for markings and tats. Glowing eyes is an option. Bright eyes is an option. Those require a restart. If you take that, fine, take that, save, close, quit, and then relaunch the last one. Okay? I'm not doing it. Come over here to races and classes. Enable short rest recharge. Enable unlimited recovery for wizards. Arcane recovery on wizard spellmaster. This is incentivizes taking that uh, discipline as a wizard. Races and subclasses. I got all of them. The races that you can have: Bulbrif, half dark elf, dark elf, half high elf, gnome, half sylvan elf, gray dwarf, magus, which is a beta class. I haven't played that class yet. Witch, monk, tinkerer, and warlock. Subclasses. Arcane Fighter, Dead Master, Master Manipulator, Path. I just collect, select all. Okay. And here's the spell master it was talking about right up here for Wizard. Feats and Fighting Styles. Again, I just click all. Same with Fighting Styles. Spells. Select all. I have them going to their default spells. Okay. Oops, there we go. I've got select all. I'm just Whatever is listed under it, put him in. Yeah, that's the world. And then there's your wizard. Okay, you can assign spells. You could go in, for example, say Green Mage um, doesn't need, I don't know what, reverse gravity. Take it out. Okay. You can do that. You can do that if you want. Gameplay. Rules. I'm using the official advantage disadvantage rule. I added bleeding to the conditions removed by greater and lesser restoration. I click blinded condition does not allow attacks of opportunity. Why should it? If you're blinded, you can't see that opportunity moving past you. You can't attack it. Fixed sorcerer twin made a magic use. Fully control conjurations, animals, animal, elementals, etc. Reduce weight of food rations to two pounds. Changed Sleet Storm to use a cube instead of a cylinder. Why did I do that? Because all the area effect spells in Celeste seem to use cubes except for Sleet Storm. So I made it use a cube too. Display height of one effect when casting Black Tentacles, Entangle, Grease, and Spike Growth. Um, allow any class to wear Sylvan Armor or Light Bringer Clothes. I'm going to uncheck this and allow a druid to wear metal armor. You can allow a druid to wear metal armor. I'm going to change my mind on that and not allow it. Disable auto-equip of items in inventory. This way, if you find their magic ring that you haven't identified, your character won't equip it. This way, they won't accidentally put on a dwarven girdle 
on their female wizard and have her grow a beard. Makes all magic stays arcane foci, except staff healing, which is universal. Quick cast light cantrip, add a pickpocketable loot, allow stack material components, scale merchant prices, correct me. Crafting and merchants, add new weapons and recipes to the shops, add new items to the dungeon maker. <coughs> Show crafting recipe and detailed targets. And I went through here and I added all these to the stores, to the recipes of the DM, and into the dungeon master. Okay. Stocks Gorm's store with all non-magical clothing. Stocks Hugo's store with wand of identity, arcane staff, drew a next staff and club, and adds new items to dungeon maker. Restock Antiquarians, Restock Arcanium, Restock Circle of Danatar, Restock Tower of Knowledge. And then various tools, enable save by campaign location, enable the respec and level down after rest. So this lets you respec if you don't like what you're doing. Override the required minimum and maximum level from starting new adventures. This is going to pertain to custom adventures. If it says you got to be level 10, if I want to play a level 8 character, try it through there, I can do that. Multiply the experience gained by. I've got it at, at 100. Which, so if they're supposed to be awarded 50 points, they get 50 points. I had put this at 90, and then a change in the game, um, I couldn't play because you're supposed to start out at second level. Well, it gives you experience points. I only got 90% of them. I didn't make second level. I could never leave town because I couldn't level up. So I went back and made it to 100. I don't know if they fixed it or not. Override the party size in custom adventures. You want to play five or six in command party? You can do that in custom adventures. I put it at five. Max backup files. Interface. The dungeon maker. You can expand the dungeon maker. Allow dungeons. Max level 20. Allow gadgets and props to be placed anywhere. Allow monsters to be selected on NPC gadgets. I'm going to change my mind and do that. But not right now. Because that requires a restart. So if I do that, then i got to save, close, and hit quit, and then relaunch. Okay? Which I will do, but I'm going to go ahead and select it. I will do the quit and relaunch, but later. These things require a player to have this mod installed. Unleash Monsters Selection. Enable Dungeon Maker Pro. Okay. Game UI. Camera follows except for tele uh, follows teleporting characters. Enable additional backstory. Enable log dialogues. These are just narrative things you can change if you want. Enable cancellation with right mouse, enable control shift, all kinds of stuff you can do with uh, your keyboard. Encounters. Encounter features won't work in a multiplayer session yet. They're working on it, okay? Enable enemies controlled by players, enable heroes controlled by the computer. This could be interesting here. Load a game to modify heroes. Okay. So here, uh, you could play, and the computer will control members of your party, I think. I think that's what that does. The counter table is empty because I haven't loaded a game yet. There are various critters that you can activate and install. Okay, so there's your mod. Now, I did make a change. Dungeon Maker. Allow monsters to be selected on NPC gadgets requires restart. So I'm going to save and close. Now when I exit this video, I'll close Lasta, and then when I restart it, it'll activate those changes. Okay? So that's how that mod works. That's what that does. Now I'm going to give you an example. I've cleared it out. I'm going to go to New Character. 
And here you can see the various races. Okay, half dark elf, half high elf, half sylvan elf. Gnomes. Gray dwarf. Gill dwarf, snow dwarf. Bullgriff. Dark elf, high elf, sylvan elf. And our humans. Two feet. Why two feet? Everybody gets one feet. The human, these are alternate humans, they get an extra feat, so they will get two feats at first level. Okay, we're going to come over here, and we're going to start, we're going to build a half-elf paladin. No, we're not. We're going to build a hill dwarf barbarian. Give him a great axe, a couple of hand axes, that all looks good. We're going to make him be a wanderer. So he will get an herbalism kit. <clears throat> be proficient with smith tools and an herbalism kit. Proficient in survival of nature. He will be cautiously pragmatic. Neutral. Look at that five. <laughs> yeah, he's smart enough to know he shouldn't do some things. He's wise enough. He lacks the wisdom to actually not do them. There, that's, yeah. <clears throat> Two class skills. <laughs> Athletics and intimidation. He gets one feat. Great weapon is actually a fighting style. When you roll a one or a two on attacks, you make a melee weapon. You are wielding with two hands. You can re-roll the die. That's an option. Or I could say, let's see here. Um, armor master. When you're in battle, you gain plus one armor class for whatever armor you are wearing. You could do that. He could take. Fighting Surge Strength. That's what he's going to do. Where was that? There it is. Increase your strength by one to a maximum of 20. On your turn, you can take one additional action. So that'll make your strength actually well, should go to a 19. <clears throat> My standard dwarf, Akamal. Body decorations. From the sorcerer stuff, you can put tats on him now. You can put some tats on him. Give me a black here. Oh. Yeah, I guess his body decorations will be black. His hair will be black. And I'm sorry, but these hairs and these beards. They remind me of Mr. Potato Head. They really do. They look like the plastic pieces that attach. They're really not good, guys. Tactical Adventures. Here we go. There's our barbarian. Good arms you got. Here we finish. Okay. So there you can see the process 
the differences be with uh, uh, the community expansion mod. Okay, you can create characters that you couldn't before. Drow elf. Is it drow or is it drow? Is it pronounced row with a D in front? Is it pronounced owl with a DR in front? I've always pronounced it drow. And I heard an R.A. Salvatore once in an interview said drow. It's a made up word. <laughs> uh, you want to do a dark elf monk? You can do that. I would think a monk would be hand to hand. That was the old style. Cast healing word, cure wounds, and lesser restoration spells once per long rest, and then you can cast these spells from your spell slots. That's an interesting one. Uh, Celestial Touch Wisdom. We add one to his wisdom instead of adding one to his charisma. Crippling Fighting Style. When you hit with a melee attack, you reduce the speed of your opponent. Hand to hand, hard to kill, plus one constitution, advantage on death saving throws, you see three times you're not only stabilized, but you regain a hit point immediately. On a critical roll, you regain two hit dice instead. That would be a good one. Okay, there are a number of these. Um, boy, is wisdom. Increase your wisdom by one while you're not wearing any armor. There you go. While you are not wearing any armor, your armor class equals 10, plus your dex modifier is 5, makes 15, plus your wisdom modifier is 2. That would give him an armor class of 17. We'll do that one. One ancestral language. He will, she will speak giant. Goblin and Orkish. So there's your monk. Dro Elf Monk. Dancing lights. Why doesn't she? There she is. Um, Candice Ladark. We need you. Okay, so now you can see, you get a little flavor for your character creation. Uh, some of the things that are enabled thanks to the community expansion to mod. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you with the uh, community expansion mod. 
answers a few questions on why you might want to install it and then how to install it, how to use it. Everybody take care of yourself. Stay safe. Have fun, please. I appreciate that you took a few moments out of your day to watch this. If you would, click like, hit subscribe, comment down below. Ask any questions you want about the mod. I probably can't answer a lot of them. Those I can't, I'll either find the answer for or I'll find out who's got it and I'll point you in their direction. Okay? Everybody, again, stay safe. Have fun. Thanks for stopping by. Till we see each other again, stay the hell off my lawn. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.